Hello and welcome back to another Computer Sluggish tutorial. Before we get started, have you subscribed to my YouTube channel yet? If not, be sure to click on the big red subscribe button on my main page. And once you have done this, don't forget to click on that bell to be the first to get notified when I upload a new video. In today's video, I will be showing you the basics of Affinity Photo. This is a fantastic alternative to Photoshop and it only costs £50. To start off with, first we need to go to the top left hand corner of our screen and click on File. And we now need to click on New. This is where we can create our new document. There are a few options in here. As you can see at the top we have our type. And I am currently on web. If I just click on the drop down box, we can actually choose from devices, photo, print and we also have print again. If I just click on print quickly, as you can see we have our page preset and straight away it is on A4. And if I just click on the drop down box again, we have lots of page sizes here which we can go ahead and choose from. But I'm going to go back to web and just leave it how it is. Once you have chosen your document type, you now need to go OK. And this is what your screen will now look like. You should have a white workspace which we can work on. On the left hand side here we have all sorts of tools which we will go through a few in the second. And at the top here we have a lot of other options which we can use to adjust our document. On the right hand side here we have a few more options which is great because it allows us to do a lot more to our project. Right, to start off with, first we are going to put a bit of text onto our workspace. To do this all you need to do is simply click on the A and we can now click anywhere on the white space. I'm just going to simply type computer sluggish and there we go. We can now go to the top and we can change the font by simply clicking on the drop down menu. There's lots of different fonts here. If I actually move this over for a second to do this all I need to do is simply click on the move tool and I can now just drag that over. And I just want to show you something quickly. If I click on the font drop down and I scroll through it actually shows me what it's going to look like which I really do like that. I think that's really cool. Um, let's just go with Comic Sans and now let's change the font size which is the next one over and we can just go about there and we can now change it to italic if we want or bold or bold italic. There we go. If you want to adjust the size manually yourself you can simply click on your move tool which is on the left hand side or press V on your keyboard which is the keyboard shortcut and we can simply just drag it from the corners for example I can just drag it from the bottom and I can drag it from the left or I can do it from the right or from the top or if you want it to keep the aspect ratio then all you need to do is simply do it from the corners once you have done that we are now going to look at changing the colour quickly and to do this all you need to do is double click on your text and just simply highlight it and we now need to click on the top right hand side here where it says fill and we can now simply change our colour text. There we go I am happy with that a nice blue and if we now just click off but actually I'm um, sorry just click back on and keep our text selected we can go to the right hand side and we can click on effects and in here we have a massive list of effects. We have blur, we have outer shadow, inner shadow, outer glow, inner glow, outline, 3D, bevel, colour overlay and gradient overlay. Which is great because I love it when there's lots of options for effects. I'm going to go ahead now and just simply apply a outer shadow. To do this all I need to do is simply click on the little checkbox here and I can now change the settings. If I turn the offset off as you can see a shadow is now appearing. If I turn the radius up it changes it more blurred or we can turn it all the way down. We can also change the opacity 
to say 100% and it will be really dark. There we go. And that's a lot more visible now. You can also change the angle if you want, like that. Next, we have our alignment, which we need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the text. And if I now right click and then go to alignment, I can select center, which it's already in the center, which is great. And we can go back to alignment and now go to align to middle. And there we go. That is now in the center and in the middle of that workspace. The next step is to add some shapes. If we go to the left hand side again and click on this rectangle tool or you can press U on your keyboard, you can then right click on the rectangle. You might not have a rectangle, it might be a different shape, but we can actually right click on it and we can choose from a massive list of shapes, which is cool. I'm going to go ahead and select say a star and we can simply drag it or if you hold shift it will keep the shape aspect ratio as you can see there. I'm just going to dump that there for a second and if we now go to the top left hand corner and select fill we can choose the color of our star. I'm going to go with a pinkish color. I like that and at the minute it's currently above our text. And we can't see our text and we want to. If we go back to the right hand side now and click on layers, we can then click on the, the computer sluggish text and we can drag that to the top. And there we go, it's now above the star. And that's what you can do with layers. You can sort of adjust the position of where you'd like the items. If you want the text on top of a object or the object on top of the text and sort of things like that. You can also then make layers visible or not visible by simply clicking on the tick on the checkbox here, as you can see. And we can also change like the opacity by simply going like that, which is all cool things. I like that. We can also change like the blend mode here as well, if we want, like that, there we go. Right, I'm just going to leave that on normal for a second. Now that we have created our star, we want to add a shadow to that as well. So we need to click on our star and then we need to go to effects again. We now need to click on outer shadow and we can then turn our radius up. We can also turn the offset up. There we go. There's a nice little shadow on our star. Let's just minimize out a shadow for a second and let's go with a outline. If I now tick outline and turn the radius up on that, as you can see, it's added a outline to our star, which is great. And that is about it when it comes to creating text and placing a shape out on our document and also how to create a document. I hope this video helped. If it did, hit the like button below and subscribe for more Affinity tutorials.